Welcome to another edition of Dan Factoids. In this edition, we will be discussing seizures and diving. A call came to us through the Dan hotline about a diver's parent asking about their daughter, a 20-year-old who had suffered a single seizure event in Mauritius and was now wanting to undertake further diving. She had been cleared by a neurologist. It was a single seizure event and therefore was not classified as epilepsy. Epilepsy, by definition, is more than one seizure event. This case was a single event and was considered a once-off. So what advice would we give, and in fact, did we give to this individual? Because she wants to continue diving, and would it be reasonable to discontinue diving, particularly if a neurologist or brain specialist suggested that it was a single event? Now, there are several considerations when we weigh up either seizures or epilepsy and diving. Seizures are not uncommon. In fact, there's about a 1% lifetime incidence for anybody, if not everybody, to have a seizure-like event. Usually, it's a, as a result of blood pressure dropping for various reasons, while remaining in the upright position, and the brain deprived of blood flow and oxygen, then undergoing a seizure. This clearly is a unique circumstance and has nothing to do with an organic brain lesion that would lead to further seizures in the future. Other possible conditions could be medication, and there are a number of medications that can cause seizures, and it's an important consideration when discussing medication or even recreational drugs and diving. And, of course, there may be febrile or fever-related conditions that could result in seizures. So the underlying condition is one consideration. The predictability is another. And the third is whether or not medication is required to limit the incidence or the recurrence or the likelihood of having further seizure events. Now, again, I want to contrast seizures or single seizures and epilepsy. A single seizure cleared by a neurologist under the circumstances in which we were or had the description, suggested that this was a once-off event as a result of low blood pressure. If a person, on the other hand, has regular seizure events, in other words, they have epilepsy, and they are now taking medication, and after a period of time, they discontinue the use of medication and have no further seizure events. Then, after a period of five years, they are felt to have exactly the same risk as anyone else in the diving population. In other words, their chance of having further seizures is the same as it would be anybody else, and therefore the risk that they take is the same as anybody else would. We want to make a distinction, though, when it comes to epilepsy, and particularly the risk of losing consciousness underwater, which is the actual issue. There are a number of considerations that we'd like you to weigh up. Firstly, losing consciousness underwater, whether or not this is accompanied by a seizure, is very likely to result in drowning. Secondly, one will be unable to assist your buddy if you were to have a seizure event. In other words, 
not only are you jeopardizing your own life, but you are no longer able to assist your buddy and in fact now present a liability to your buddy who has to assist you. And that is not exactly fair and reasonable to expect. Thirdly, we want diving to be a fun-filled sport, a safe sport. And where there are risks that are avoidable, we should avoid them. We will post various position statements of diving organizations around the world and how they feel about conditions related to seizures and epilepsy, and we encourage you to look at those and make careful decisions. Discuss it with a diving doctor and, preferably, a neurologist if there is any doubt as to why you've suffered a seizure event.